Again, calling the attention of everyone to please open your cameras while using the allotted Zoom background for today's event. We just start from the beginning. And to our audience, please do check and make sure to keep yourselves muted throughout the whole program. As we will begin momentarily. Thank you. A pleasant afternoon to everyone in the senior high school department. We welcome you all to this year's Language Fest, a celebration of our literary culture and a culmination of activities appreciating its value and importance among us all. In line with this year's theme, nurturing, innovating, and celebrating students' love for reading and writing in the new normal. We aim to highlight the beauty of our literature and our literary capabilities, which have developed over the years as we continue to make great use of our literacy to continuously move forward in life. Hence, our following events for today, the public speaking competition, and the debate, Clash of the Stars. I'm sure everyone is eager enough to hear the voices of their contenders for both contests, and rightfully so, as it is going to be their most valuable weapon in creating an impact through their words, bringing forth influence and change with what they express once they begin to speak. So, Without further ado, let us officially start this program with a prayer to be led by Jana Eliza Lee, to be followed by the singing of the Philippine National Anthem. Let's all bow our heads in the most heavenly presence of God, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Our dear God in heaven, thank you for this new day that you have bestowed upon us. We thank you for all the blessings and this opportunity in particular to be able to gather together this afternoon for our event as we get to learn and share our experiences with each other. May you bless the contestants who have the clarity and wisdom to think and be able to deliver their intentions with greatness while integrating camaraderie and integrity within their performance. May you bless each and everyone involved, from the committee to our judges and so on, as they do their work in great harmony to allow the steady flow of our program, as we incorporate our moral values in order to uphold ourselves and others as well. Most importantly, we ask for your guidance and oversight, our safety and well-being in all aspects as amidst these difficult times. All these we ask in your holy and mighty name, Amen. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. 
Sang awit ng Pilipinas. As we begin our exciting program for today, let us first hear from the grade 12 batch governor himself, Martin Joshua Uy, for his opening remarks. Thank you for that to our host. So a pleasant afternoon to each and every one of you. As we begin with, our, with one of our most awaited activities this day, I would like to give a few words. This pandemic has been one of, the, one of the toughest times humanity has to face. The suspension of face-to-face -face classes proved to be one of the toughest experiences that anyone has to face, especially us students. However, it doesn't stop us from committing our school's goal of honing students' talent. We believe that with this activity of ours, we can hone the talents of every Taitungian to make them debaters and excellent public speakers. With this, we welcome you to this year's first ever public speaking competition and debate 2021 Clash of the Stars. Again, a pleasant afternoon and may you enjoy this year's first ever competition amidst the pandemic. Thank you, Martin. As of the moment, I do think everyone deserves to know who will be the amazing individuals that are going to be judging our participants. And in that case, let me start off by introducing our first judge. A former student and now alumni from the batch 2020, he was held as the male Taitungian icon of the year 2018 and was also crowned as Mr. T. Nopseya 2019 champion. He garnered the winning title for their Petra Kusha Battle 2019 and also won first place as the best news presenter for the Division Schools Press Conference or DSPC 2019 English Radio Broadcasting. Our first judge is no other than Mr. Rene Antonio Vinco.
on to our next judge. He is an alumni from the batch 2020 as well. He was the Clarion's editor in chief for the school years 2017 to 2018. Notably, he was also a Thos Awards finalist in the year 2018. He then grabbed first place for the Division Schools Press Conference or DSPC 2018 under news writing in English, and moreover, was held as the champion for their senior high school debate in 2019 among his many accomplishments. Accomplishments, rather, help me in welcoming our second judge, Mr. Hans Benedict Gaute. Last but certainly not the least, our chairman of the board amongst our panelists. She is the immediate past president of the Rotary Club of Marapara. She was also hailed as the most outstanding transform president and given the honor of excellence and meritorious leadership awardee in the RID 3850 District Convention 2021. She is also a Toastmasters International Speech Crafter and won Best Speaker in the Toastmasters International Speech Craft Program 2021. Her prowess led her to become a cum laude graduate, a leader, an educator, and a promising public speaker. She is the one and only Miss Mina Joy Retita. And that completes our final set of judges. Surely everyone is as flabbergasted as I am for just from listening to our beloved panelists' set of achievements. And in turn, hopefully it inspires many to do their best in whatever it may be. And also use their voices to promote positive literary reinforcement in one's day-to-day -day life. And now, EJ, I think everyone is already waiting for the thrilling competitions that we have in store. Why don't we proceed with the program proper, shall we? Yes, we shall. To kick it all off, let us welcome everyone to the first event in today's program, the Public Speaking Competition. May we now call on Neil Christopher Manahan for the reading of the guidelines and the criteria. Now I would like to introduce to you the public speaking competition contest guidelines and criteria. First, this contest is open to all grade 11 and 12 students of a Taitung High School. The second, the participants should not have entered or won a significant standing in previous public speaking competitions. Third, participants must then prepare a three to five minute speech and they have the freedom to choose any topic that is under the theme, nurturing, innovating, and celebrating students love for reading and writing in the new normal, as long as, it, uh, as long as it is not offensive and adheres to the four core values of the school. Fourth, the participants can choose any type of speech, whether it may be persuasive or informative, as long as the speech must be memorized and recited in the English language. Fifth, the participants will then be placed in a breakout room while waiting for their turn in presenting, and when it is their time to speak, they will be relocated to the main room. Six, each participant will only be given three to five minutes to present their speech. And, and lastly, there will be a total, be a two point deduction every 30 seconds if the participant does not reach the three minute minimum or exceeds the five minute maximum time given. Now for the criteria for judging. Content, the overall thought what was impactful and evident to the theme, 30 points. Pronunciation, diction, fluency on the language. Clear tone and understandable diction, 30 points. And delivery, the participants deliver it in a creative manner, 40 points, a total of 100 points. Thank you, Neil. We will now be sending our dear participants for the public speaking competition, including our debaters, into our breakout rooms as we are about to begin. So, Gianna, our audience might wonder what is the purpose of our breakout rooms for the contestants, no? Do you know? Well, I think I have an idea, but why don't you explain it to us? Well, here it is. It's not necessarily just to let the participants who aren't performing yet to know the other's piece, but instead, it's more on easing them up for their turn, you know, getting rid of their competition jitters. And so, and that's why they'll just hang out with it, with their moderators rather, and prepare. And for the meantime, while it isn't their turn, 
they could just hang out there. And now I think everyone is ready, Diana. Everything is set and in order. With that being said, may we now call on our first participant from the grade 11th Kingdom of Procyon, Maria Cassandra de Misana, with her piece, The Significance of Continued Reading and Writing in the New Normal. A pen, a paper, and a book, a weapon of students towards change. To our most treasured students of this school, once again we met to smile, laugh, talk, and reminisce our best and worst experiences in these trying times. Let these be in the past. Let us move forward. As students, we needed continuous learning processes. Let our pens be up again to write beautiful words. Show to the world that education cannot be frightened by war or calamities. Let us start over again. Open our hearts to our love of reading. And most of all, our meaningful words must be transformed on paper to show the prints of our generation. The love for reading and writing should be part of our beautiful life under a new normal. Let us ought to encourage intellectual curiosity among our fellow students. One way to get students excited about reading and writing is to create an environment that can encourage that behavior. Let us give importance to the prominent display of books in the classrooms that entices many students to discover new content for literacy. Once a famous king of Sparta in the ancient times said, I shall rather be a beggar and dwell in the garret than a king who does not have books. In my personal experience, I've found out that environmental factors can lead to a significant impact on what I think about reading and writing. This is something I've experienced myself through a variety of different life events. Through reading, I was able to see far beyond the scope of my country. This allowed me to see how people in some parts of the world lived. It could be difficult for someone who has never been outside of their home country to view the rest of the world through the lens of those who have actually lived there and experienced it. After all, reading leads to the development of mental ideas and writing enables us to express such ideas. The love of reading compressed one's knowledge in so many ways. This is also an expansion of one's experiences. In addition to knowledge and motivation to yourself, the practice of reading widens one's horizon in research. In today's time, the modern method of reading and writing somehow gained a scientific approach using common gadgets and software. But let us use these modern ways to be our tool in expanding our love to read, and most of all, to perfectly enjoy the art of writing. For sure, reading is like installing new software in our brain. The longer we enjoy reading, the longer we stay in our belts of updates and understanding. Finally, approaching the new normal and embracing reading and writing will make us better people in the long run. Just remember, don't close your eyes while reading. Otherwise, you won't see 
anything, especially the beautiful words written for you and me. Thank you. Well, wasn't that just splendid? Thank you so much, Cassandra. Now, from the grade 12's Alfar district, we may now call on Ray Arthur Rahida with his piece, Right to Breathe. Breathe in, breathe out. Inhaling and exhaling. This cycle is essential for living creatures like us. And all the things we do depend on us functioning through breathing. As children, one of the, few, one of the first things we learn is to read words and eventually learn how to write them. I personally have started off reading words and getting familiar with them before attempting to write them. You see, we all need the familiarity of something in a general sense for moving on to understanding them on a whole new level of difficulty, if you please. In regards to this thought, let me start off with a quote from Justin Musk, a Canadian author saying, breathing is the inhale, writing is the exhale. A quote that interprets how essential the skills of reading and writing are to our lives to the point where can it survive society without even mastering the basics? The modernization of the world has given the youth an extensive array of opportunities, sources of knowledge and information that past generations did not have the privilege of growing up in. Discovering pieces of literature without the boundaries of the physical world allowed people more exposure, which they used as platforms for reading and writing. Authors are most likely the first thing that comes to mind when reading and writing is mentioned. But in my experience, I think we students do it a great deal too. Maybe even more. Don't you guys agree? Reading and writing became even more accessible. Students having the freedom of immersing themselves in everything they desire. This practice became even more abundant as classes moved to an online setting here in the Philippines, thereby the situation being dubbed as the new normal. For me, these circumstances made me love reading contents and writing about them because I believe that our interests are highly influenced by the limitations brought by that certain subject. We all can't deny the fact that the new normal has brought more bad than good, but one of the few good things it has brought us is the chance to embrace exposure to limitless literature. Who knows, maybe in this situation, people have opted to venture further into the field of writing because they have discovered a world with, in which they can be in control of everything. The intense feeling of loving something is honestly a sentiment that is not easy to acquire. We all need genuine interest and motivation in order to get that level of emotion. And with today's youth, one big factor to maintaining that interest is by limiting boundaries. Like the quote I have mentioned before, according to Lit World Organization back in 2014, reading brings new ideas, perspectives, and worldviews. Writing is how we send our own voice, hopes, wanderings and opinions into the world. Captivating books act as mentors for a child's own writing and provide valuable guidance on how to tell stories and craft strong ideas. Writing is like breathing in and writing is like breathing out. And I'm quite positive <coughs> that we all love breathing oxygen, right? I hope I'm not the only one who thinks that through the circumstances we are now in, we have loved the refuge. Reading and writing literature has brought us. So, yun yun na yung nahalap yung sarili ko as creator. Parang, 
dito lang siguro muna ako mag-focus kasi ito yung nagbibigay sa akin ng work at nagbabayad ng bills, bills ko, oh. di ba? A terrific so, speech ako. indeed. Uh, Thank you, Ray. Moving on, from the Chamber so, of Polaris of the Grade 11, let's call it Terrence Adrian Park with his speech, the readers and writers of today. We live in the 21st century, the digital age. Advancements in technology brought about a massive change in our society. One example would be the field of literature. Although the access of many literary works has been made simple and writing compositions made easy, the impact of technology in reading and writing brings several drawbacks resulting in less productivity and literacy, especially during this pandemic. Case in point, the love for reading and writing in today's students. Don't get me wrong, I know a good number of students who enjoy and have a passion for reading and writing, but not everyone. Prior to the pandemic, the percentage of students who read 30 minutes or more daily declined from 53% in 2017 to only 49 in 2019. New research shows only about 25% of middle schoolers and 31% of high school students practice writing 30 minutes a day which curriculum experts say is the minimum amount of time necessary. In addition, with the pandemic ongoing, reading and reading fluency among second and third graders is roughly 30% behind in a typical year. At higher levels, according to research, a high percentage of students are indisposed due to the situation, which may lead to a lack of skill development regarding literacy. I am also guilty of this because sometimes I lack the will to read or even write. However, with all these going on, we students should realize that having these habits is not healthy. In reality, the more you read and write, the more you broaden your vocabulary and are able to articulate concepts accurately and more effectively to others. Increasing your ability to communicate helps make you a better student or a worker in the future. In today's world, the importance of reading and writing in communication skills is greater than ever. Communication is vital to the success of performances of all projects, no matter how big or small. For these reasons, we should continue to give importance to reading and writing amidst this new normal. Who could better help us than ourselves? We are responsible for our future, and the love for reading and writing will help us achieve our goals both academically and socially. So let us nurture, innovate, and celebrate the love for reading and writing in this new normal. Pick up a book, open to the first page, and start reading. Thank you.
We were absolutely enthralled by that. Thank you, Far. On to the next. Coming from the House of Altair, from the grade 12, let's welcome Ral Hinegaban with his piece, The Indian Secret. Something you should have guessed about me, aside from the fact that I did this turban by myself just to look a little bit like an Indian today, is that I could imitate the accent of most Indian people. See, I was influenced by the thought that Indians are worth emulating. I was brought up to believe that Indians are always the smartest individuals living here on earth. To tell you, a week ago, I was searching for the best chess tricks to beat my dear friend. I went to YouTube and as I scroll, I was like, whoa, I wish I was Indian. Last year, I was into world's most famous authors for our century literature course. Later did I realize that almost all the persons written on my paper came from India. And just days passed by, I was seeking tips for public speaking. And there's always this Indian who can help me. There's always one Indian who can save you in mathematics, science, sports, life, even language. By then I started wondering, what's with these people? Why are they so intelligent in almost everything they do? And just a few moments earlier, after a year of searching for the answer, I found their secret. Ladies and gentlemen, Indians spend more time reading than anyone else in the world. Yes, Indians' secret behind their wit is reading, reading that is impossible without writing. Thus, in line with the thought, allow me to share to you my insights of how great nurturing, innovating, and celebrating students' love for reading and writing in the new normal actually is. It was 2014 when a noose shook the world. A man survived gunshots fired at his chest because a book in his front pocket blocked the bullets. The bullets would have gone through his heart if we're not for that book. Now reflect on it. If books can stop bullets, reading and writing can save your life. Yet the problem we face right now is more than bullets. The pandemic has shaped the new normal practices that deprive most of us to experience the pleasures of life. The recreational activities we usually do can now only be done with limitations. But reading and writing allow us to take a deep breath and to see the world in a better, as a better place. Reading and writing allows us to see the world in a way that we see it before. My co-students fostering, developing, and enhancing our love for reading and writing relieves the frustration that most of our school works can cause. It gives us the capability to increase our communication skills, our reading strategies, our vocabulary, enable us and exploring the world and most importantly, prepares us in the present and for the future. A famous American author once stated that the more you read, the more you get better at it. The better you get at it, the more you like it. And the more you like it, the more you do it. I came back to appreciate how Indian people has inspired me just because they read. You see, reading and writing can help you not just a person, but as a beacon of inspiration to others. I realize I did this turban by myself because I wanted to imitate Indians. But now I want to take it off because I believe that anyone can be their own kind of Indians only if they nurture the love for reading and writing. Indians are indeed deserving 
of our praises and honor. But what's more worth celebrating is the fact that we are blessed with language. What an awesome revelation that is. Thank you, Brian. And now, all the way from the Antares Academy of the Grade 12, let's welcome Eureka Rain Hara with her piece, Freedom in Reading. Never again, never again with the insecurities of the past that many Filipino children were not able to read and write. In reading, there is liberty. In reading, there is success. Great leaders make great writers. Great writers make good communicators. Good communicators make good persuaders. And do you know what good persuaders make? They make good society. And this is what the world needs. Nevertheless, I was confused in how this generation could make it. Everyone talks about Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, mobile games, and research had shown that kids can stay on screen for six and a half hours a day. Another research was also conducted that 33% of high school graduates do not engage in reading after graduation. And worse, 42% of college graduates do not engage, do not read books at all. The number one indicator of fights or broken relationship is poor communication. And the number one in predictor of occupational success is good vocabulary. Friends, my message today is read more. At first, when I was a kid, my mom would spend thousands of pages to buy books that almost created a mini library for me. She always signed books for a day, a week, or even a month but she ended up frustrated because I had no interest in books at all. I am not a reader. I may read a chapter and drop the book alone. Until my friends and I watched movies like The Chronicles of Narnia. And they were used to critic the movie with that of the book. I felt so embarrassed every time they asked me because with all honesty, I never read a book of 500 pages at age 14. Yes, I received good grades in school. Yet I felt so little that I knew nothing. It triggered me to push myself to read. The first book I read was Lucid Dream. It was hard. I was in a battle between reading and doing something else. But I pushed myself and created a habit of my own. When I finished Lucid Dream, I had this feeling that I had never felt before. I finished something I never thought possible. There is freedom in reading. First, psychological freedom. Reading is somewhat similar to meditation. It can lower stress, give deeper sleep, and reduce memory loss. Second, freedom for pleasure. There are places that the book can take us, like a Jurassic Park of Michael Friday and Percy Jackson in the Olympians of Rick Riordan. The time and money in reality prohibit, like this of the pandemic, where health protocols are seriously observed. Also, there are people we met in the pages of the book. You can skip the tea party with Mad Hatter or you can help treat animals with Dr. Dolittle. Third, freedom to learn. Everything we want to achieve in life is something that somebody else has already achieved. Every aspiration or dreams we have have already been lived by somebody else. Since they have already gone through the process of acquiring what we want today, why not learn from them? Lastly, freedom to build habits. Long before the industrial and medieval societies had the power of capital and physical strength respectively, the power nowadays lies in the hands of those people with specific kinds of information. People who have information today can make a meaningful change in their lives. 
and of the ones they care about. Information is power, an indispensable weapon. The good news is this vulnerable information is free and is accessible to everyone. It is available for you and it's just waiting for you to find it through reading. Imagine spending 30 minutes reading in a day that would mean we are exposed to thousands of new words that are incorporated to our own arsenal that would make writing possible. I already overcome the obstacles in reading and I must say, I am free to explore the world. Therefore, it is my job, our job, to indulge our families, friends, communities to read more. This can reach thinking, acting, connecting, and living life profoundly. As Frederick Douglass said, once you learn to read, you will be forever free. Thank you. Wow, just wow, that was incredibly exhilarating. Thank you so much, Eureka. And lastly, let us welcome our final contestant in the lineup. From the grade 11's Radiant Pollux, let us welcome Aya Dominique Halea with her piece, To Read and to Write, Growth in the New Normal. What is the first thing that comes to mind when you hear the words new normal? The most obvious answer, COVID-19. Perhaps it could be face masks or face shields. Some might even think of the plummeting Philippine economy or consider the corruption issues and how these aggravated the Philippine political scene. But I'm digressing. Hi, I'm Aya Halea from grade 11 Pollux, and the first thing that pops out of my mind when I hear the words new normal is time. I am sure that I am not alone in thinking that we've had much time on our hands since the pandemic began. We have saved a lot of time by staying at home. Much of the time we would have spent commuting to school. So what should we do with all this extra time? Watch Korean dramas on Netflix, scroll through your social media timeline, or maybe read that novel you bought some time ago. You know, that book on top of your shelf, already collecting two years worth of dust, the coronavirus has altered the course of life as we know it. Schools are closed, we are confined to our houses, and the future appears bleak. You may ask, why read at this moment in time? Reading helps us take our minds off the pandemic, even just for a little while. It lets us step into the shoes of Alice as she wanders through Wonderland, or maybe Juliet as she waits for Romeo on her balcony in Fair Verona. The stress of being cooped up for nearly two years will definitely take its toll, especially on someone accustomed to social interactions. But reading relieves stress, which is extremely important now that we are in the grip of a pandemic. Reading improves your memory, your ability to focus, your vocabulary, and your communication abilities. Above all, reading helps you to see the world through the writer's eyes. Your brain is a muscle, and like your body, it also has to be exercised. However, it should be highlighted that, that there is a need to regulate the type of literature students read. Reading fact-based articles, for example, will broaden one's horizons. Fake news, on the other hand, will only serve to rot it. So, offering curated reading lists as part of academic modules is beneficial. This list will point learners in the direction of what they should read. So, Remember that book on top of your shelf that we talked about a while ago? Maybe you should start reading a page or two. Maybe you should start reading a page or two. You will never expect the kind of world that book could take you, from the world you are in to the world within the pages of the book. Writing. Everyone knows that writing is essential, but have you ever, have you ever wondered how or why, especially in the midst of a pandemic? Aside from reading, writing ability should also be developed since reading and writing work hand in hand. Writing can help you overcome life, especially during these times. Writing, like reading, helps keep ugly thoughts at bay. And if the constraint is too great to bear, writing allows people to release their worries by putting everything on paper. Whether typewritten or handwritten, writing can also be highly therapeutic. 
when we write, we are in a conversation with ourselves, raw and honest. Because it is a vehicle for us to convey our struggles, hopes, and joys. It assists us in making sense of the world and our place within it. Keeping a handy journal to jot down daily events can cultivate writing in the new normal. A therapeutic technique to organize our ideas, record our days, and vent our feelings, particularly during times of fear. Because as the virus spreads and confines individuals primarily to their homes, many people are already writing pages with their stories of living during the new norm. Their journals are sold in words and pictures involving kitchen inventories, window views, questions about the future, and concerns about the present. To conclude, reading and writing alleviate our mental burdens. They keep people busy and ensure that people will continue to grow and flourish even if stuck at home. We may be in the midst of tragedy, but we should feed on the beauty of creativity, reading and writing, as this will sustain us. Just like the passage from the poem Transit by Rita Duff, while in the midst of horror, we fed on beauty, and that is what sustained us. Thank you. What a way to end the contest. Thank you, Aya. Those were just incredibly moving speeches hey, from the grades 11 and, and 12. To... Wasn't it, EJ? It really gets you to think about your passion towards literature and its entirety. I simply agree. It provokes more awareness for everyone to inculcate literacy in various forms and methods to be able to inspire change. And that sums up our first half of today's program, bringing the public speaking competition to an end. Our contestants can now rest for a while as we move forward towards the second half of our program. I'm pretty sure everyone is excited to see this event unfold as we are all anticipating a battle that will answer the question, should divorce be legalized in the Philippines? We now welcome everyone to the latter part of our program, the Electrifying Debate Class of the Stars 2021, with the topic, the legalization of divorce in the Philippines. I'm completely invigorated to what will happen, so let's now call on Beyonce Tan for the reading of the guidelines and the criteria. May I present to you the guidelines and criteria for today's debate. For the guidelines, the contest is open to all grade 11 and 12 students. Each grade level will be required to have five fixed speakers in which they are the only ones allowed to speak during the debate. Only the chosen participants assigned in their specific area are allowed to speak during the said debate. It will consist of the following an introduction, an argument, a rebuttal, and a conclusion. Before the debate begins, a timer of three minutes will be set for each group's segment. The timer will start once the hosts give the go signal, and only then the speaker is allowed to begin. Once the speaker approaches the three-minute maximum, the speakers will be given an additional 30-second allowance. A sound will be played indicating that the participant only has 30 seconds left, he or she will be muted by the moderator once they exceed a said time limit, through which they will also be deducted two points from the score sheet. The participants must prepare two main standpoints for their arguments that correspond to their stand on the topic. And lastly, please refrain from using curse words and ad hominem. Overall, participants must observe the four core values of propriety, justice, integrity, and conscientiousness. Moving on to our criteria. Organization and clarity. Main arguments and responses are outlined in a clear and orderly way. 20 points. Use of argument. Reasons are given to support the resolution. 20 points. Use of cross-examination and rebuttal. Identification of weakness in a negative team's arguments and ability to defend itself against attack. 20 points. Presentation style, tone of voice, clarity of expression, precision of arguments, 
all contribute to keeping the audience's attention and persuading the and persuading them of the team's case. 20 points. And lastly, introduction and conclusion. Does it leave a significant impact towards the audience? 20 points for a total of 100 points. Thank you, Beyonce. As you've noticed from the guidelines mentioned, we really wanted an orderly manner of things, thus the incorporation of the said rules. We encourage everyone to follow through so that we can still enjoy the spirit of a debate without the complications. Now, Gianna, I think everyone is all ready and fueled for the debate. So without wasting any more time, let us introduce to you the participants for the debate Clash of the Stars 2021. Starting off with the debating team for the affirmative side, let's welcome the grade 12's very own Kenneth Ernest Delphine. Janelle Paul Nilios, Miles Henrik Gauma, Gwen Casey Medina, and Natalie Denise Yap. We wouldn't have a debate if we don't have the opposition. So let us now introduce the debating team for the negative side. Let us welcome the grade 11's very own Trish Colleen Canastillo, Jan Isel Espinosa, Elise Samantha Salgado, Paul Brian Alexis Chua, and Tyron Dale Yao. And they are complete. I do think that signifies that we are prepared to begin our debate. So as per order, we will now start with the opening statements or introduction from both sides as to their stance on the legalization of divorce in the Philippines, starting with the affirmative side. We now invite Kenneth Ernest Delphine to start us all off. But first, Kenneth, are you there? How, How are, are you, you Kenneth? Yeah. Yes, I'm great. <laughs> are you feeling any pressure right now? No, I don't feel any pressure right now. <laughs> That's great to hear, Kenneth. Now, once, once I, I give, give the, the go signal, signal, you may begin, begin okay? okay? Okay. And your timer starts now. To start up with our proposition, let us define a few vital terms. First, Marriage, according to the Philippine Family Code, is a special contract of permanent union between a man and a woman entered into accordance with law for the establishment of conjugal and family life. It is the foundation of the family and an inviolable social institution whose nature, consequences, and incidents are governed by law and subject to stipulation. Second, annulment is a broad term for two types of resolving a marriage in the Philippines. The first type is the annulment in the strict sense of the word and presupposes a valid marriage but voidable for reasons like impotence or having an incurable sexually transmitted disease. The second type are void marriages due to minority, lack of a marriage license, and psychological incapacity. If an annulment is granted, marriage is void from the beginning. As such, if qualified, the annulled party can remarry. Third, legal separation is a court-ordered agreement in which a married couple lives separate lives and the court may specify financial obligations, child custody, and etc. Both legally separated couples cannot legally marry again. Fourth, divorce is a formal ending of a marriage. It is more permanent than separation and involves a legal process. If you get a divorce, that means the marriage is officially over and both parties can remarry. So why legalize divorce instead of the usual annulment and legal separation? Because there are irreconcilable marriages that will not qualify for an annulment, and both parties need a permanent dissolution of marriage and at a certain time wish to marry again. Whether we like it or not, there are current marriages that no matter how much both parties would like to preserve such marriage, it is no longer possible since there's already no love and trust, and staying in such an abusive relationship brings more damage to the family. Therefore, we are in favor of legalizing divorce as a straightforward remedy for a marital failure.
Thank you for that compelling statement, Kenneth. Now, let's move on to the introduction of the negative side. May we call on Trish Colleen Canastilia from their team. Hello, Trish. I'm sure you have prepared well, haven't you? Uh, yes, uh, I have. Our group has, yes. Well, that's great to hear. Okay, likewise, you can start once I give the go signal, okay? <laughs> Trish, your timer starts now. According to the definition of Executive Order Number 209, the Family Code of the Philippines by the former President Corazon Aquino, marriage is a special contract of permanent union between a man and a woman entered into in accordance with law for the establishment of conjugal and family life. It is the foundation of the family and an inviolable social institution. Divorce questions that inviolable social institution. After all, its definition states that, the is, that this is the ending of a marriage by a legal process, and it is the complete separation between two people. Divorce breaks down this moral and conscious nature of humans and confuses the quality of relationships among humankind. Divorce is not the only option. There are more viable solutions to clear up a marriage than resorting to such means. And that was it. What a beginning to our debate, folks. You've now heard the introductions of both parties, a great foundation for the two teams to start off and make their stances known. Now, to take it up a notch, it's time for the teams to present their arguments. Let's now call on from the affirmative side, Natalie Denise Yap. Okay. Natalie, are you feeling confident, Nat? Yes. Nice. That's great to hear. Now, Natalie, ready? Your timer yes. starts now. Divorce is generally understood as the solution of a marriage. By its nature, divorce is not restricted by any prescriptive period. It may be filed at any time after the cause or ground manifests. Unlike legal separation, it effectively severs the marital bonds and allows the divorced spouses to remarry. Unlike the annulment of a marriage, it does not require that the solemnization of the marriage be suffering from any serious defect. Unlike decoration of nullity of a marriage, it does not require the absence of any essential requisite of a marriage or that one of the spouses be clinically diagnosed as having a disorder that renders him or her psychologically impassive incapacitated to perform the essential marital obligations. Divorce and the right to remarry would give parents a chance to become better role models for their children. If they find new partners and remarry, the relationship need not be illicit. Allowing the spouses of a failed marriage to remarry would provide the spouses and their children a chance to enjoy a new, wholesome family life. Wow, things are really starting to heat up. From the negative side this time, let's hear what their argument would be. Paging Chan Isosa Espinosa to move forward. Isol? Hi, Isol, are you ready? Hi, yeah, I'm ready. Okay, nice. Moving on, Isol, your timer starts now. First point. Commitment and trust. Commitment and trust are two important moral compasses that are essential when it comes to marriage and love. These are the foundation of any relationships for the simple reason that without it, no relationship would ever be strong enough to last long. Once those two moral compasses are broken, the relationship would fall down with it. Commitment isn't something that you have. It is the, the result of the trust between two people. And let's be real. We admit that the reality of trust and commitment is not as easy as it may seem, which is why a couple needs to trust and get to know each other before they even think to start to get married. 
to start in order to build a strong foundation and for a strong marriage. Second point, effects of divorce on kids. The couple aren't the only ones who are affected when the couple gets divorced. The children are trying to understand changing dynamics of the family may leave them distracted and confused. That leads to the feeling of loss, anger, confusion, anxiety, and can leave the children feeling overwhelmed and emotionally sensitive. Third point, prevention is better than cure. Marriage is something that shouldn't be rushed. Even if one says that the person they chose to be wedded to is truly, quote unquote, the one, they need to be rational and need to have fully thought about everything under the sun. That includes all the good and bad sides of the other person included in their marriage. Thank you. <laughs> And there you have it, the blazing arguments of both teams. Woo! I'm betting that this is really going to be a good time for all, and I'm already pumped up. Now, everyone, get your adrenaline high up and running as we are about to step foot into the grounds of the rebuttals. We are giving each team a final amount of 30 seconds before they start and a friendly reminder once again to be more conscious of our rules. Besides that, once we give the go signal, your representatives may begin to rebut. The negative side's team will be the first to throw off their rebuttals against the affirmative side. Your 30 seconds final preparation starts now. And there you have it. Your time is up, guys. Now, I hope, I hope you've processed that because we are now calling on Tyrone Dale Yao and Paul Alexis Chua. Hello, guys. Are you both ready? Uh, more, more or less, yes. Nice. How about Paul? Nice. Nice. It's great to hear you. Now, on my mark, your timer starts now. Okay, so first of all, you mentioned in your argument that um, during kid, when you have kids and you undergo divorce, you state that it gives them a better life or another chance to remarry and make a happier family. However, what kind of grounds can you say regarding that the child will be happier? Because according to statistics from Family Means Organization, divorce, there are adverse effects of divorce on children, such as poor performance in academics, because they would be distracted about the changing dynamics in their families. We also have loss of interest in social activity because research has suggested divorce can affect children socially as well. So children whose family is going through Divorce may have a harder time relating to others and tend to have less social contacts. Stay, some, sometimes children would feel insecure and wonder if their family is the only family that has gotten divorced. And children would also have difficulty adapting to change. They can be emotionally sensitive. They would have issues of anger or irritability and feelings of guilt because they would wonder why a divorce is happening in their family. They will look for different reasons, wondering if their parents no longer love each other or if they have done something wrong. These feelings of guilt have a, are a very common effect on divor of divorce on children, but also one which can lead to many other issues. So how can we say that divorce gives a family or a broken family a better life when these effects can when these effects of divorce on the children in the family can affect their growth and as well as their perspective now and in the future. Furthermore, 
it doesn't help the underlying problem wherein the personal behaviors of the parents are what caused the divorce in the first place. It should have been established right at the start of the relationship before the marriage about the kinds of rules that you must place on each other before committing. Because commitment is not something you do because you trust someone. It's because after a long time of trusting someone, you commit to them. But you don't trust someone because you commit to it. Thank you. Now there goes your first rebuttal. Now let's see what the opposing side has in store for everyone. To the affirmative side's team, your 30 seconds preparations starts now. Okay, so time's up. Let's have Janil, Paul, Milos, and Gwyn, Casey, Medina for their turn. Guys, your timer starts now. It is true that there are options aside from divorce, like annulment and legal separation. But as stated in our introduction, there are cases of broken marriages which do not fall under the annulment and legal separation, thus the option for divorce. The children are not supposed to live in a toxic environment. They are the hope of our fatherland, as Rizal has said. Therefore, we cannot afford to have children who have distorted views on marriage and family. We are here today not because we are anti-family, anti-marriage, nor anti-children. We are here because we love family. We believe in marriage and we are here to support the children so that they can have a chance to grow in a wholesome family life. Legalization of this will provide a straightforward remedy for marital failures. Would you rather stay in a toxic relationship for the sake of preserving marriage and suffer for the rest of your life? In this way, we can say that you, the problem is not with anyone, but with the system that we are fighting against. Divorce is an alternative, cheaper way, faster way, and more accessible way to more Filipinos, especially that our, that our country is developing. It is faster and it enables our country to extend our views on certain topics with the growth of the future there are more possibilities and other problems that may arise and we need to adapt divorce is one of the one of these uh, um, uh, uh, solutions in order to stop our old thinking and help progress and in terms of kids, the social issues, that's the responsibility of the parents to teach them on how to deal with it. They had kids. They committed. They should know how to manage, help, and grow their kids, not only with the education of the school, but education starts in the family. And your family code uh, marriage is a special contract of permanent union between man and the woman, then why does annulment and legal separation exist if it can still be voided? Mm -mm -mm. What a rapturous end for our first wave of rebuttals. Everyone is certainly ecstatic and still pent up with emotions. 
with these amazing facts and statements that get our audiences and participants riled up as well. Pretty much so, EJ. The teams are now preparing for the next and final round of arguments and rebuttals to claim their sides. Our audience must be divided as of the moment as to who persuades them the most, and I certainly cannot wait for the results. In that case, we will now be moving on to their second arguments. Let us now call Isel Espinosa once more to present their next argument, this time for the negative side. Isel? Hi. Hi, okay. Your timer starts now. First point, therapy for prevention. As mentioned before, divorce is not the only option. There are more viable solutions to a marriage than resorting to such means. One of these options is seeking therapy or consultation. Couple counseling and cognitive behavioral therapy are modern options and the most effective method. Second point, Married for wealth or marrying for convenience. Marriage has recently been taken lightly. Some tie the knot because of the wealth of the person they are marrying, and others get hitched because they don't want to feel left out, which means the essence of marrying is slowly degrading and it's losing its value. Marriage is done because a couple is ready to take the next step into their relationship. If other factors can change this decision, then these should be considered prior to finalizing said marriage. Wait, shit. Something is wrong. I know. I can't the lag up on Zoom. Well, pop goes the second argument from our negative sides team. Let us now move forward to the affirmative sides, Natalie Yap, as she states their second argument. Natalie, hello. Hi. Okay, your timer starts now. The legalization of divorce will help affected children grow in a peaceful environment. Continued exposure of children to an abusive parent or to parents with socially unacceptable behaviors leaves children with corrupt role models. The children grow up believing that marriage is a license to inflict pain on one's spouse and or children. That is good, that it is good to take prohibited drugs or regulated drugs without prescription. That committing crimes constitutes respectable behavior and sexual perversion is normal behavior. When parents suffering from irreconcilable differences choose to stay together, they subject their children to their constant fighting and word war with each other. The despise each may display for the other and the unkind, cruel, and spiteful words each hurls against the other disillusion their children about marriage. Their children grow up believing that marriage is akin to imprisonment or worse, hell, that is avoided at all costs. When spouses of a failed marriage choose to live apart, or when one is abandoned by the other. The children of separated spouses are nevertheless exposed to defective role models. Separated spouses eventually find new partners as husband and wife without the benefit of marriage and start new families. This behavior gives children the impression that it is morally right for a married individual to have and maintain an illicit relationship and to live with his or her illicit partner, even without marriage. Thus, despite separation, the children grow up with distorted concepts of marriage and family. When children are born of illicit relationships, there is that painful stigma of illegitimacy attached to the children of illicit relationships, and they often find themselves discriminated against. And there goes the second argument. Whoa, a new set of information for both teams to rebut in order to defend their stance. 
At this point, we're all at the edge of our seats for the next and final round of rebuttals. With, every, with everything seemingly elevated, let's now move on to the last rounds of rebuttals giving the affirmative sides allotted 30 seconds to finalize their thoughts. Guys, your 30 seconds starts now. And time's up. Let's now hear from Janiel Nilos and Green Medina to defend their case. Guys, are you are you there? Present. Okay, yeah. so the timer starts now. To repeat, we are here because we are here to promote the legalization of divorce, which will provide a straightforward remedy for marital failures. Divorce is not the first option. In fact, divorce should be the last straw when all other actions have failed. Divorce is a chance for a new life for both spouses and children. We are allowing divorce because not everyone can afford to splurge hundreds of thousands of pesos just for it to be canceled or deemed uh, uh, in a uh, stopped by a judge or canceled. Not everyone can afford these therapy sessions. Almost 60% of Filipinos aren't even secure with their food. They're not financially secure for themselves, for their families. And splurging hundreds of thousands just to be canceled is not a way that we should be Legal, we should be going with here in the Philippines. Let us give broken families a new life, a, a chance for a new life. Let us legalize divorce. What a way to go for the team of the affirmative side. Last but not least, to showcase their rebuttals, let's give the opposing team their 30 seconds of preparation first. Guys, your 30 seconds start now. Guys, time's up. Now, let's call on once more Tyrone Yao and Paul Chua for the negative side. Guys, are you once more ready for your last rebuttal? Ready as we have it. Nice. And your timer starts now. I believe that the things that can that transpire before marriage needs need a lot of thought and consideration and before we marry and before we marry we must think of the thing we must think about different things we must consider different aspects so that when we become married we do not have we won't have problems we won't encounter problems major enough that would that we would consider divorce as a last straw or a, or a last viable resolution in order for us to save that marriage and earlier the phrase corrupt role models was actually mentioned and a resolution in the accessibility in our government and in our system. And I think that before we legalize marriage, we need to work on the, access the accessibility of our mental health solutions, therapies, and treatments so that we so that we can foster a so that we can foster a healthy household and we can hit two birds with one stone. We can save a family and we can raise children that think that 
that mental health must not be a stigma, but rather it is something that needs that can be healed. Mental health, <clears throat> mental health is something that can be healed, and we can have children that would grow up and think that every problem has a solution that does not resort to ending a certain relation. And we thought about and a concept was actually said. A uh, distorted concept of parenting, and I think that if we prioritize conversations that spark hope, spark change for the children, then we, then we can have, then we can teach children a better concept of a family in which we can solve problems together. And furthermore, with the development of therapy and consultation, divorce no longer seems to be that only option because. From the start of society, from history, ever since humans have been able to live in comfort and not worry about survival, relationships are not about the need to survive, but about the need to want. So divorce has always been a debated topic throughout history, but only now, after the development of human rights, has it been debated. And to make it more accessible would make it a, a more viable option. and would make therapy and consultation more modern solutions developed in the 1800s to be less viable, which are more helpful, and they are also less expensive. For example, in a divorce, it is more cheaper to get a divorce than to go through a whole session of therapy. However, with divorce, there is, of course, there is the child funds. There is also... emotional problems there is little bonds that are still left over even after the separation which are not considered but with therapy not only will those bonds be maintained and even though it's a little bit more of a uh, expensive option it is the more surefire way to preserve a marriage and to preserve the ingenuity of a human relationship without having to break it so prematurely, prematurely. Thank you. To cap, off my, to cap off my rebuttal, I believe that drugs, crimes, and corrupt role models can be solved by more accessible therapy, more accessible treatments, and mental health solutions. Because if we just, if we just have divorce as a solution, as a resolution to a marriage, I believe that... I believe that it can, it can still serve as a platform for drugs, crimes, and violence to occur to other people. So therefore, I think we need to spark conversations that spark hope, spark love, and change in order for us to save families and to make children grow and foster thinking that every problem has a solution that does not resort to ending a relationship. Thank you. Wow, such a statement from both of our teams with their final rebuttals against each other. This was a euphoric rush for everyone, and we're certainly enticed by the arguments of the two teams. Now, to wrap it all up, let us now listen to what the two sides have to conclude in claiming their stance. To start, let's invite Miles Henrik Gauma for the affirmative side's conclusion on the topic of the legalization of divorce in the Philippines. Miles? Hello? Are you there? Yes. <laughs> you may now begin. The legalization of divorce doesn't mean that we support polyamorous or broken families. We are fighting for the women, men, and children who are victims of domestic abuse and free them from toxic environments that will cause psychological distraught. Yes, you can file for annulment, but it is a lengthy process, not to mention that it costs a lot of money. It's better for Filipinos to have a cheaper or more options when it comes to their family or marriage. On top of that, you cannot remarry in annulment. A family should be nurturing and loving, and there should be an environment where all members of the family are happy and free from toxicity. Because nothing is more painful than being forced to stay with someone who causes you psychological or physical pain. Legal separation is also another way, but, un but like annulment, legal separation is very costly and has a very lengthy process. And the costly also goes with the therapy because we are a third world country and I think that therapies are not really that, uh, they're very expensive and they cannot be afforded by the Filipinos. Uh, 
Okay, back again. Divorce is also a formal way of ending a marriage and gives both parties a new life, a life away from psychological distraught and a life that gives you freedom from chains bound by toxic and abusive spouse or parental figure. That is all. Thank you. Thank you for your final thoughts, Miles, and to the whole affirmative team. Next, let us now listen to the negative side with their conclusion on the legalization of divorce in the Philippines to be stated by Elise Samantha Salgado. Elise, are you ready? Yes, I am. Definitely. Okay, you may begin now. Under the grounds that we have established today, though divorce appears to be an appealing option for many in the current society, it ultimately shows the many issues that inhabit humanity. As of this moment, with the distance we place between ourselves and the disingenuity of relationships brought about by abstraction and apathetic behaviors. The widespread acceptance of divorce is a clear result of the modern world, and should it be passed, marriage itself will lose its meaning. Relationships, nay, the social essence of human beings itself is lost and thus must not be tolerated. Rather than accepting divorce as the end-all be-all method, especially to marital problems, then we must strive to provide better, safer, and more conclusive ways to be able to solve said problems instead. Let us make it a habit to be more open-minded towards our fellow peers who are struggling with this debacle and be more accepting and supportive. That is all from our side. Thank you. Thank you so much for your final thoughts, Elise, and to the whole negative team. What compelling statements from both of our debating teams. It surely got us questioning and thinking about our own personal views on this topic. And that, everyone, is a wrap on our debate Clash of the Stars 2021. I know everyone is still, you know, wanting more, but this was such an amazing experience nonetheless for all. And we would like to urge everyone to give a big round of applause to all of our participants from both the public speaking competition up until our debate, Clash of the Stars. You all did an incredible job. And whatever the results may be, you all are winners on your own. Before anything else, we would like to express our utmost gratitude towards our judges for their time and efforts in being a part of this program. We would now like to award the certificates of appreciation to the following. To Mr. Rene Antonio Vinco. Again, we would now like to award the certificates of appreciation to the following. To Mr. Rene Antonio Vinco. To Mr. Hans Benedict Gaute. And to Ms. Mina Joy Retita. Thank you so much once more. When I started my business in 1995, it was very difficult. I had an idea. I invited 24 of my friends in my apartment because that year I went to Seattle, first time, my first trip to the USA. I never touched computer in my life before because computer was so expensive to me and so complicated. After two hours of explaining what I'm going to do, internet, and 23 of them say, forget it. He said, this thing never worked because there's no such thing called internet in the world. You know nothing about a computer. So why you want to do this? And um, only one people, he said, Jack, if you want to try it, just to try it. But if there's something wrong, just come back. 
And uh, after a whole night thinking, I say, I still want to do it. Because most of the people, they have a fancy ideas in the evening, but in the day, when they wake up in the evening, or in the morning, they go back to do the same job. We have to do something different. So from there, I started my business borrowing 2,000 US dollars from my relatives and friends. So that was the, my trip. I call myself like a blind man riding on the back of blind tigers. And those people who are expert of riding horses, they all fall down and I'm still surviving. Since 1995, I started a business. I, I almost fill every project, never survived. None of us has money. But if, if somebody say, I give you one million US dollars and I give you trust, which one I would choose? I choose those people who give me the trust because it's the trust that make, make us be united. When I go to the China red company registration office, I said, I want to register a company called Hanzo Hope Internet Company. <laughs> the guy looked at me and said, this is the English dictionary. Tell me there is no, there's no word called the internet. Why you want to register a company called the internet? So I cannot register a name, company name. In order to prove I was not lying, I invited my friend who is a TV man take the TV camera, they all stay in my home, and we, they just try to take the picture. I, I, I die from Hangzhou to Shanghai, Shanghai to America to connect the internet. It took us three hours and a half to download the first front page. So every, I have to make like a hundred stars to keep my journalist friends to stay and wait because to prove that I'm not telling a lie. For the first three years of Alibaba, we had a no revenue, no business model. From 1999, we have 18 founders, to now we have a close to 60,000 people. Our sales, uh, called GMV last year, is over 550 billion US dollars. And uh, it's just the beginning. We will probably go across uh, 1 trillion US dollars in three years. We do not think we are a company. We think we are economy, and we hope in 20 years, by year 2036, we will be the fifth largest economy of the world. I've been saying this to my team since when we were in the apartment. When we were in the apartment, I say, guys, in the next 10 years, or in, in, in the future, Alibaba will be the top 10 websites of the world. And my founders look at me and say, what is 10? Number 10 mean. Today we are ranking like a 500 million something at the back. Yeah. But you have to believe it. I think as an entrepreneur, if everything is ready, that does not need you. Because nothing is ready, that needs entrepreneurship. When Netscape was so good, we never thought it would disappear. Yahoo was good, we never thought like it today. So don't believe you'll be good all the time. Be paranoid. Mm -hmm. Just to finish the first 100 meters yet. Do not think the people beside you is a competitor. Running for another 3,000 meters, then you know who is a competitor. So I thought when I'm 40, I can go back to teach. But when I'm 40, oh my God, life was so tough. So tough. My company almost in big trouble. So I say, I should not leave. And then I say, when I'm 45, I should retire. When I'm 45, I cannot stop it. And then I start to prepare, say, people say, Jack, you are the next Bill Gates. I say, I cannot compete with Bill Gates, but I can compete with Bill Gates who can retire earlier. The thing is, I don't want to die in my office. I want to die on the beaches. I was trained to be a teacher. And I benefit because I don't know, know anything about technology, computing. I still puzzle about what is soft, how soft they can work. And I, I do not know about con, con, you know, accounting, marketing. I know very little about that. But the thing I learned from being a teacher, that you, a teacher always wants his students 
to be more successful and better than you are. So this is I learned to be a good CEO. Look at the young man. If you think he will be your boss, he will be my boss in five years, hire him. As an entrepreneur, today is very difficult, and tomorrow is even more difficult. But the day of tomorrow is very beautiful. Most people die tomorrow evening. <laughs> you have to work hard. You have to learn. You have to rely on your team. As an overview, the video is a motivational speech from Jack Ma. He is a former English teacher who co-founded the Alibaba Group, one of the world's largest e-commerce businesses. In this video, he shares his difficulties in which he faced, and also shares his take on entrepreneurship and starting a company. With that, you know, Diana, what are your thoughts? Well, that was indeed inspiring of Mr. Jack Ma. And we encourage everyone to take something out of that video to at least awaken something inside us, whatever it is. So for now, you no. Know, how about we call on for Sir Jeffrey Jake Aragon for his closing remarks before anything else, before we announce the final list of winners for both the public speaking competition and the debate Clash of the Stars 2021. All right. Thank you so much, EJ, our very energetic host. Also with Gianna, let's give a big hand once again to EJ and Gianna for a job well done, for carrying the program from start to finish with so much energy. Thank you so much, EJ and Gianna. All right. So I'd like to congratulate in advance our participants for Language Fest 2021. So this is our first public speaking competition, and I hope that we can have more of this in the next coming years, since we wanted to discover new uh, public speakers you know, from Titan Senior High School to represent also our institution in various competitions. In fact, right now we are scouting for potential speakers since Sir June and I, you know, we were tasked to scout for potential public speakers for the upcoming NOPSEA competitions. So uh, well, let's see you know, if we were able to notice that you have what it takes to represent our institution, then you'll be joining those competitions. And also I'd like to um, acknowledge the committee members, of course, starting with the Batch Council of Grade 12. Let's give a big hand, headed by their governor, Mr. Martin Hui. Also, we have the following students, Neil Christopher Manahan, EJ Mercurio, Beyonce Tan, Nika Cabasa, Catrice, uh, Natalie, Ella TM, Jeff Cartel, Jana Lee, Roger Heroso, Gianna, Gabby, Bilonio, Alia De Leon. And yeah, those are the members of our uh, committee. So thank you so much for working so hard to come up with this uh, very fantastic program. And I'd like also to acknowledge the presence of our teachers. Thank you so much for joining us today. And uh, I hope that you will not, um, uh, to our students, you will not stop creating these kinds of events and participating in these kinds of events, because these events are all for you guys. We wanted to expose you to these um, speaking engagements, because you'll be needing this experience when you go to college. Like, um, what uh, our judges you know, experience or have experienced before. I'd like to once again acknowledge also Miss Mina Jerry Pita. Thank you so much, dear, for accepting our invitation to be part of this program, the Language Fest. And also our alumni, once again, Rene Antonio Vinco and Hans Benedict Gaute. Thank you so much, um, judges. And to all our students, our viewers, all the members of the administration, Thank you, thank you so much. So to all the winners, good luck and advance congratulations. Back to you, Ege and Gianna. 
Okay, so there goes that. Thank you again, Sir Jake. Thank you for your closing remarks, your early closing remarks. So because right now we already have the final list of both the public speaking competition and also the debate clash of the stars. Okay, so it is now our most awaited part of the program. Who do you think will grab the title of first, the champion for the public speaking competition, and second, the debate clash of the stars 2021? Okay, so type in the chat box who your contenders are, by the way, guys. No, because we would like first to remind everyone that the scores of the judges and the calculations of the tabulators are final and irrevocable. So continue to chat down your contenders. Is, is it from the grades 11 or from the grade 12? Any specific section, especially for the public speaking competition? But yeah, just continue. And now let us begin with the announcement of winners for our first contest, the public speaking competition. We will be first awarding our certificates of participation to our finalists, and then we will be announcing the top three. So, are you guys ready? Yes, ready! Well, first, can we hear the echoes of support from the Chamber of Polaris? Woohoo! How about the roars from the Kingdom of Procyon? Well, lastly, in the grade 11 batch, give it up everyone from the Radiant Pollux. Go oh, Pollux, let's go. Go Pollux. Oh, let's go. Okay. Okay, now moving on to the grade 12. Oh! <laughs> Can I get a loud cheer from the Antares Academy first? Oh! How about the bustling noise from the Alphar District? Oh! And lastly, how about the screams from the House of Altair? Oh! I think everyone is so pumped up. So right now, without further ado, let us announce the finalists for the public speaking competition. So first, we would like to give congratulations to contestant number, who do you think? You know, I, I'll, I'll stall for now. Uh, so, yeah, ready? Again, congratulations to contestant number, contestant number two, Ray Arthurita, with this piece, Rise to Breathe. Congratulations, Ray. Can we have a quick photo op first, Ray? So we would like to request our committee to please pin the spotlight on Ray Arthur Ritida. Oh my God. Oh, rather, oh, uh, pardon me. Uh, we will have our photo up later, by the way. So oh, no. that is my mistake, pardon me. So Gianna, please take it away. Well, congratulations, Mr. Ritida. Next, who do you think is our second finalist? Any guesses? <laughs> okay, so let me continue. Next, congratulations to contestant number one, Maria Cassandra Demisana, with her piece, The Significance of Reading and Writing in the New Normal. Congratulations, Cass. And lastly, we would like to congratulate our last finalist amongst the six contestants. So who do you think will be Woo! our last finalists? Now, we would like to congratulate contestant number... Who do you think it is? 
Contestant number four, Riley Hanegaban with his face, <laughs> The Indian Secret. Congratulations, Riley. Congratulations once again to our top three, to our finalists. Can we get a quick photo up for our three finalists, please? Yes, for our three finalists, please do have your cameras on. And for the committee, please pin them on the spotlight. Thank you. Okay, ready? Guys, one, two, three, smile. She's gone. Now, again, one, two, three, smile. And there goes our finalist. Think, oh, wait, it's not yet ready. Oh, Brile is still not here as I was informed. Brile, are you there? Paging Bral Hinegaban to please turn on his camera. Oh, I found a pin. Okay. <laughs> okay, we'll be waiting first. Um, we would like to request Maria Cassandra de Misana to please turn on her camera. Okay, once more. Three. Two, one, smile. Okay, last, last screenshot. One, two, three, and smile. Thank you so much once more to our finalists for the public speaking competition. Now, moving on to the top three. Who do you think will take home the title as the champion for the public speaking competition? Continue to type down on the chat box who do you think your champion is? Okay, I see a lot of supporters. So now, without wasting any more time, let me announce the second runner up for the public speaking competition. Are you guys ready? Who do you think it is? Your second runner up. Congratulations to contestant number Contestant number one, Eureka Rain Hara with her piece, Freedom in Writing. Congratulations. <laughs> number three. Okay, can we get a quick photo up first for Eureka? Ready now? I saw that. Okay, we are waiting for our committee to pin Miss Eureka Hara. Congratulations once more. Oh, pardon me. She's contestant number three. She is not. Oh, uh, wait. A contestant number five. Pardon me. Okay, ready? Three, two, one, smile. So last screenshot again. One, two, three, smile. Thank you so much, Eureka. Wow, congratulations, Miss Hara. So now moving on, we will now announce the first runner up for the public speaking competitions. Congratulations to contestant number eight. Any guesses first? Who do you think is the first runner up? Well, yes, obviously grade 11. Well, here it goes. Congratulations to contestant number three, Terrence Adrian Parr, with his piece, The Readers and Writers of Today. Congratulations. Can we get a quick photo off, please?
Okay, ready for the photo op? Three, two, one, smile. And last screenshot, one, two, three, smile. Thank you once more, Par, and congratulations. And that leaves us with the champion for the public speaking competition. A huge congratulations to contestant number six, Aya Dominique Kalea, with her piece, To Read and to Write, Growth in the New Normal. Congratulations. Now, can we have a quick photo up once more? Okay, ready? Three, two, one, smile. And last screenshot. Three, two, one, smile. Nice. Congratulations again to everyone. Congratulations, Aya, to the champion of the public speaking competition. Once again, we would like to give a big congratulations to all of our participants in the public speaking competition. A job well done to you all. And now, on to our second event. We will first be announcing the special awards for the debate, Clash of the Stars 2021. For the special award, Best Speaker, this award goes to... But wait, who do you think it is? Who do you think is the best speaker? Any guesses, guys? Well, congratulations to Paul Brian Alexis Chua for winning the best speaker award. A round of applause, please. And Paul, let's have a quick photo op, please. We, we would like to request our committee to please pin Paul Chua for the photo op. Yes, right there. Ready? So, three, two, one, smile. Nice. And last screenshot once more. Three, two, one, smile. Congratulations and once more, Paul Chua. Now, moving on to the next special award, the best debater. Now, who do you think it is? Continue to type amongst our debating teams and their members. Who do you think it is? Ready? Let us congratulate Gwen Casey Medina for winning the Best Debater Award. Congratulations, Gwen. Now, we would like to request Gwen to please turn on her camera. And there it goes. It's already pinned. Now. We would like to request the committee once more. Ready? Three, two, one, smile. Okay, last screenshot for the photo op. Three, two, one, smile. Nice. Congratulations again, Gwen. And before anything else, I was informed that please to all the participants in our Zoom, please do check the chat box, the general chat box for the evaluation and attendance. Okay, so that you would be recorded if you ever are here today, or yes. Okay, before anything else, Diana, please take it away as you no, know, they check their attendance first. Well, lastly, what everyone has been painstakingly waiting for, the champion for the debate, Clash of the Stars 2021. So again, but first, congratulations to Miss Gwine and Paul for winning or for garnering our special awards. So who do you think will be this year's Language Fest debate Clash of the Stars 2021 champion? Okay, keep it coming on the comments, guys. Well, everyone, cheer on for your contending team. This year's debate champion is... 
Well, a huge congratulations to the affirmative team. Congratulations, grade 12. So congratulations once more to both teams for the debate class of the stars 2021, especially our champion for this debate, the affirmative side, consisting of <laughs> Bennett, <laughs> consisting of Kenneth Ernest Delphine, Jeanette Paul Nilios, Miles Henrik Gauma, Queen Casey Medina, and Natalie Denise Yap. Huge congratulations to you guys. <laughs> Now we would like to request our winning team for a quick photo op first, please. So again, for the committee, um, please, please pin our five winners. Okay, it's good to go. Ready? Three, two, one, smile. And last screenshot again. Three, two, one, smile. Okay, once more, congratulations, grade 12, the affirmative team. So now, um, with our program already coming to an end, let us officially, you know, sing our Alma Mater song. So once more, thank you again, everyone, for your participation. And thank you to our audience, especially our committees as well and the organization. Thank you so much and have a great time. But don't forget to please check your attendance again in